Never heard of the Ashley Gang? You're not alone. John Ashley, the self-named King of the Everglades, and his gang terrorized Florida in the early 1900s. They robbed banks. They were bootleggers and rum runners, and they were pirates. They had a feud for over a decade with a local sheriff, and they died a bloody death, which some claim to this day was murder. Let's dig into this. John Hopkin Ashley was born in the late 1800s. Some reports say 1888, while others say 1895. He was raised mostly in the Florida Everglades and knew how to hunt, trap, and fish. He was known as a skilled alligator hunter and a crack shot. He had four brothers and four sisters, and the family reportedly tried running a grocery store, a gas station, and a boarding house. Along with his father and brothers, he spent some time working on the railroad being built near Fort Lauderdale, and the whole family was known to be nothing but trouble. John Ashley trapped otters in the Everglades with a Seminole trapper named DeSoto Tiger. In December of 1911, Ashley sold a load of nearly 100 hides to a dealer at the Gertman Brothers Trading Post near Miami. Reports vary but he made between $1,200 and $1,700. His partner hadn't been seen in a while and wasn't with him at the trading post. And then, on December 29, 1911, a dredging crew working around Lake Okeechobee found DeSoto Tiger's body. Palm Beach Sheriff George B. Baker discovered John Ashley was the last man to be seen with Tiger and sent two deputies to arrest him for murder. But the Ashleys knew they were coming. John and his brother Bob ambushed the deputies and gave them a message for the sheriff. Reports vary on the message, but whatever it was, it would start a war between the Ashleys and Sheriff Baker that lasted over a decade. Meanwhile, John Ashley decided he had better make himself scarce until things cooled down. Running from the murder charge, he disappeared. Some say he went to New Orleans, and others say he went as far as Seattle. For some reason, he returned to Palm Beach in 1914 and surrendered. Maybe with the huge Ashley family and a network of friends in the area, he thought he would be found not guilty at trial. His reaction to a request for the trial to be moved to Miami supports this theory. He promptly broke out of jail and formed the Ashley gang. The gang included John's father, brothers, and his girlfriend, Laura, up the grove with many of the men drifting in and out over the years. They ruled the Everglades with hidden liquor stills and hideouts. Laura planned a lot of the bank robberies and acted as a lookout. She seemed to always have a pistol on her hip and became known as the Queen of the Everglades. Of course, John Ashley was the king. They robbed a train in 1915 but didn't get much. Then the gang robbed a bank in Stewart, Florida on February 23, 1915. It didn't go well. They got over $45,000, but in a getaway shootout with police, John was accidentally shot in the jaw by a member of his own gang. The bullet lodged behind his left eye. Sheriff Baker didn't have a lot of trouble finding a man hurt that badly. Some reports say Ashley was lying in a shed screaming from the pain. John Ashley went back to jail, still facing murder charges for the death of DeSoto Tiger and charges for the Stewart Bank robbery this time. He did receive treatment for his shattered jaw and a new glass eye. Ashley was moved to Miami for the trial, and rumors started that the gang was coming to break him out. By June 2, 1915, Bob Ashley, John's brother, and maybe the most violent member of the gang by some reports, got tired of waiting and decided to break John out himself. He went to the Dade County Jail, shot Sheriff Deputy Wilbur Hendrickson in the chest when he opened the door and grabbed the jail keys. Hendrickson's wife grabbed a rifle and tried to shoot back, but either the gun jammed or she missed. Other officers responded to the commotion, but Bob Ashley decided to run for it. Officer John R. Riblet gave chase 
and yelled for Bob Ashley to give up. Ashley turned and shot Riblet, who was able to fire at least two more shots, hitting Ashley in the head and stomach before he was shot again and died. Officer Riblet would be the first Miami police officer killed in the line of duty. Bob Ashley died from his wounds too. And it was all for nothing. His brother John beat the murder charge. He was found guilty of robbing the bank in Stewart and sentenced to 17 years. But jails didn't seem to hold Ashley for long. He escaped for the second time in 1918 while out working on a prison road crew. He didn't go far. By the time Prohibition went into effect, the gang was operating moonshine stills all over the Everglades and rum running from the Caribbean. He was arrested in 1921 for bootlegging and it probably saved his life. Two of his brothers disappeared at sea on a rum running trip and John Ashley was sure they were killed by another gang. He swore revenge and members of the rival gang disappeared a short time later. John was still in jail so no one suspected he had anything to do with the disappearances. The Ashley gang managed to continue their operation despite John being behind bars, and by 1923 he was back as the king, after breaking out of jail for a third time. In September of 1924, some of the gang robbed the bank of Stewart, again. Gang member Hanford Mobley dressed in women's clothing and held up tellers, while other gang members emptied the safe. A short time later, they robbed a bank in Pompano and got over $20,000. After a robbery, Ashley liked to leave a bullet for the sheriff so he'd know just who to look for. Legend says every time the sheriff received one of the bullets, he swore he'd wear John Ashley's glass eye on his watch fob one day. It is said the Ashley gang robbed as many as 40 banks in the few short years they were active. They also stole the cargo of rum running ships in the area and charged protection fees for using their territory for illegal activities. Legends say the gang got over a million dollars through their various activities and buried most of it in secret spots all over southern Florida. On November 1st, 1924, Sheriff Baker heard the gang was headed to Jacksonville to rob a bank and contacted the local sheriff Sheriff Baker sent four deputies to arrest the gang. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office sent at least three of their own deputies. They decided to set a trap by hanging a chain across the bridge at the St. Sebastian River with a lantern warning that the bridge was out. That same night, a car with two men pulled up to the bridge right before the gang did, and they stopped. When the Ashley gang pulled up to the bridge, they were forced to stop behind the first car. And when they stopped, the deputies came out of their hiding places and surrounded the car. They ordered the two men from the first car to leave. And things happened pretty quickly after that. Later reports say the deputies told John Ashley and the three members of the gang with him to raise their hands. They started putting handcuffs on the men, but John Ashley made a sudden move and deputies shot him. The rest of the gang started shooting and the sheriff's deputies fired back, killing them all. But... The two men that stopped at the bridge before the gang pulled up insisted the entire gang was handcuffed before any shots were fired. They claimed the gang was purposely executed on the bridge. There were supposedly marks on the gang members' wrists supporting this version of events. They were explained at a coroner's inquest as normal marks made by the coroner during examinations. All deputies present when the gang was shot testified the men were not handcuffed at the time, according to newspaper reports. The coroner's jury ruled unanimously that the deaths of all the Ashley gang members were justifiable homicide. But some folks believe to this day the gang were murdered on the bridge. After John Ashley's death, the rest of the gang fell apart. His wife, Laura, died three years later when she drank a bottle of disinfectant during an argument with a man trying to buy moonshine from her. She may have thought it was booze, or she may have poisoned herself on purpose. She was only 30 years old. Only $32,000 of the gang's stash was ever recovered, 
and people still hunt for the buried Ashley Gang loot to this day. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.